Good afternoon and uh, welcome to uh, this session of uh, Medem Lab. Uh, my name is Paul Brindley. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Music Ally and uh, been delighted to uh, be asked back again for the 11th time now working with Medem on uh, on this competition which yeah we've been uh, we've been running uh, since its inception. Um, I think it is fair to say that it is perhaps the the most established uh, music startup competition, I think, um, that uh, in, in the world. Um, in case you're unaware, some of the previous uh, winners have included SoundCloud, The Echo Nest, Kickstarter, Songkick, Next Big Sound, and to my right, the winner of this category last year, SoundCharts, and the, um, the overall winner last year indeed. Um, and uh, this year we received more submissions than ever, keeping uh, us judges very busy. Um, as I well recall very recently, uh, 235 submissions we had, uh, and those were whittled down by uh, ourselves, uh, Music Ally, uh, by Kima Ventures, who are uh, on the judging panel today, and uh, by Blue Nove, uh, to the, uh, the final five that you'll see in the, in the various categories. So they've done very well to get through from that uh, initial list in the first place. Um, in terms of the, uh, the format for the, uh, for the session, this is uh, the category of marketing and uh, data and analytics. The uh, presenters, one person from each of the companies, will present for five minutes, uh, warning everybody again it's a strict five minutes. Um, and then I will come to the judges who have five minutes to ask questions. If there is available time, we may come out to audience for questions, but normally uh, the, most of the questions really just come from, uh, from the uh, judges. Just so you are aware, the uh, finalists today have all been coached yesterday by uh, Abbey Road Red, the uh, startup incubation program uh, that's now been led by an ex-employee of Music Ally, Kareem Fanous, which I'm very pleased about. Um, and uh, right afterwards, uh, we will go away and uh, we will be uh, joined uh, by our colleagues from, uh, from Deezer. Uh, Deezer are in the audience today and uh, they get the biggest thank you of all because they are the sponsor, the overall sponsor. So thank you very much for, uh, for supporting, uh, supporting Medem Lab. And uh, we will, well they, will decide uh, upon a winner from this category which will be announced uh, later on this afternoon. Um, in terms of what the winners actually get, apart from obviously the most important thing, which is the kudos of, uh, of winning this in the first place, uh, they also get a private meeting with Deezer's CEO, Hans Holger Olbrecht, private meeting with Kima Ventures, a private meeting with uh, Techstars Music, uh, the Music Accelerator Program, free legal advice from Jeff Liebenson of Liebenson Law, free publicity advice from PR strategist Joanna Kirk, and free registrations to Medem 2019 and to Slush uh, in Helsinki uh, later on this year. So, I think I've done all of, the, uh, all of the necessary introductions. It's time just to have quick introductions from our esteemed judges. So, first of all, let me uh, introduce David Weisfeld from Soundcharts. Just a quick uh, um, summary of who you are and what you do. Uh, hi, everybody. So, indeed, I'm David from Soundcharts. We won this category and the overall one uh, last year. I also manage a kid called Petit Biscuit, who is um, quite a big streaming artist. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. And Kate Russell. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm Kate Russell. I'm a technology reporter and author. Uh, I've been reporting on technology since 1995, um, so I've seen quite a few changes. Um, and I um, have been with the BBC on a show called Click, which is on every uh, weekend on BBC World for 13 years now. I mean, you, you, beat, you beat us, honestly. That's a very long time. Um, Eleanor Udea from Kima. Hi. Uh, I'm uh, part of the team of Kima Ventures, the venture arm of Xavier Niel, a famous French entrepreneur. We invest in two to three startups per week, uh, and we have a portfolio of more than 650 companies uh, now. And uh, we have several uh, investments uh, in the music industry, so uh, I'm happy to be part of the jury. Today. And you're an investor in David's company. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, we're going to get started. So again, there's five um, presentations. We're going to hear them one after another. Uh, five minutes for the presentation, five minutes for questions. So please, can you uh, give a big round of applause to our first presenter from Muso.ai, Kieran de Kayser.
Yeah. Good day, Cam. My name is Kieran Kaiser, and I am the co-founder and product director of Muso AI. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the brink of a paradigm shift that is going to forever change the way that we interact with technology. I'm talking, of course, about voice and AI. It is predicted that voice will account for 200 billion searches per month by the year 2020. Now let's take a look at what we can do in music. We can do some simple but limited stuff, like Play Me Songs by Justin Bieber or Play Me Jazz. While this is fine for the consumer, what if as an audiophile I wanted to play songs in a certain key, with a certain instrument, or by my, f or by my favorite music professional? What if as a music professional I wanted to know who played guitar on that song, what guitar was used, and how many streams that guitar player has over all the streaming platforms combined. Well, there's something holding us back from this end state, and that problem is incomplete, inaccurate, and, and most importantly, unverified music metadata. Because of this, music professionals aren't getting credited properly, rights ownership is non-transparent, and the end consumer experience will forever continue to be hindered. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to, for the first time, show you what it looks like when metadata is captured properly. Muso, play me songs in the key of G minor. We're building you a playlist on Spotify for songs in G minor. And there we have a song in the key of G minor. As a music professional, we can have some back and forth conversations to really deep dive in the music metadata. Hey Muso, what was the most streamed song in 2017? Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. What label released it? It was released by Atlantic Records UK. Who is their A and R? Ben Cook. Connect me with him. Sending a connection request to Ben Cook. From here, we can go to his profile, see how many credits he has, how many streams he has over all the music platforms combined, what he's worked on, and who he's worked with. For years, metadata capturing has been done at the time of distribution, leaving a lot of room for error and credit disputes. Muso AI is a patent pending product that captures all the metadata while the song is being made. We capture collaborators, song gear, and music philosophies and techniques behind that song. Muso AI has a powerful analytical platform that can for the first time show music professionals like songwriters, producers, and engineers how many streams they have over all the streaming platforms combined over all the songs they've worked on. On our app, similar to LinkedIn, we show what someone has worked on, who they've worked with, and most importantly, how we can contact them. Muso AI is the verified source of truth. We have 5.2 million profiles ready to be claimed in our system. In order to claim your profile, you will scan your driver's license so that we can make sure that you are who you say you are. If you're an artist, you can verify yourself by one of the many social channels. Finally, we import all the credits in our system to your profile so you can get started right away. Being the verified source of truth, allows us to open up our API to current businesses and future businesses being built to have our data as their foundation. Our second revenue stream is our freemium to pro version. As a free user, you can start building songs and capturing credit right away. But if you want a little bit more juice, you can subscribe for $10 a month and you can leverage our built-in work for hire and production contracts, get advanced analytics on how your songs are doing, representative and contact information, and request credits on legacy tracks that you've been left out on. 
Finally, since we show gear on our platform, we can refer the user to where they can buy that piece of gear where we take a 6% commission on that referral. I invite the jury to ask me about our scalability and our community since we only had the five minutes. Thank you everybody so much for listening to Muso AI. Thank you. Okay, who'd like to ask the first question? Okay. Um, hi. Um, hi. Congratulations, great presentation. Thank you. Um, who are your competitors in this space, do you see? So we don't see any, uh, any uh, direct competitors. We, uh, we see people like uh, Genius doing some uh, credits on the side, then they could be uh, a competitor with some features that we have. Um, Splice is another one that has a really big producer community that could possibly be um, a, uh, a uh, competitor f for some features, but really the direct competitor of being a LinkedIn for music focusing on credits and who did what. We don't see any direct competitors that are in that Structure field. Structure is scaling at speed. Mm -hmm. what, what are your kind of mechanisms for making that happen for you? Uh, so we have a few systems in place. Uh, in order to verify what you've worked on, you actually have to invite someone else that worked on that song to verify you. So there's a natural kind of a virality to the system. Um, we come from NRG recording studios in Los Angeles. So we're kind of a hub for all the music professionals to come in there and really use this product going forward. Um, we've also partnered up with one of the biggest music schools in the U.S. Full Sail University. This is in their curriculum so that future music professionals going into the field know exactly how to capture their credits properly and to start building their portfolio from day one before stepping into the field. Thank you. Eleanor? <clears throat> Congratulations on your uh, demo. When are you planning to launch? Uh, so we are in private beta currently. Uh, we plan to have a open beta for about three to four thousand users this summer, and then we plan to have a full product launch uh, this fall. What is uh, going to be your acquisition uh, and go-to-market strategy? Uh, so for the uh, go-to-market, that is really with. Uh, with Full Sail University, like uh, we said. They have a whole alumni uh, network of all the people that have gone to that school, roughly 60,000 people in the music field in the US, um, some that have won Grammys and awards and really going after those high profile people first. Um, and uh, sorry, what was the second part of your question again? <laughs> and do the people have to fill their profile? Uh, sorry, what? Is it a platform, an app? Can you? Oh, right. Do you need to enter through the voice system? Yes. Um, so, the voice is really an extension of what we do. We are um, a social platform for music professionals, okay. really trying to focusing hard on credits. But the voice is one of the features that we have to make our platform so accessible. David. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, you you sh showed the uh, the profile of uh, A and R for Ed Sheeran. Yes. Um, uh, mentioning that it would be his profile. Um, so I I understood for the gear, um, um, what key and what studio was it recorded in? What does the music professional that is not a studio professional um, getting? For example, you said contact uh, Ben Cook. Uh, why would he be on the platform? Like. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's professional for studio and music making, or if when you say music professional, you talk about uh, people who sign artists at record labels and so forth, and how would they use the platform? Um, uh, yes, so we want to do that too. So a and R people or other people that work at labels, publishers, being able to see who is behind that song, what else they've worked on, who else they've worked with, where they live, and if they're currently available to work on any new song. Um, very much a professional network of people that are involved in music and documenting what they've worked on so everybody can see. So, so you would be uh, chatting within the platform? Yes. Yeah, it's a social um, platform. Yes, exactly. So um, uh, more connecting 
with them, and messaging with them, seeing what they've worked on, very similar to how LinkedIn works currently for, um, uh, for the more corporate world, but this is solely for music. Okay, are we good? Yeah, well, we've only got 10 seconds left, so I think we'll leave it there. And right, thank, uh, you. thank you very much, our first presentation. <laughs>so that's the first presentation uh, from uh, Muso AI from the USA we have uh, four more to go and uh, I would like to welcome to the stage from the UK uh, number eight um, Abhishek Sen can you guys all hear me at the back Sorry? No. All right. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Abhishek Sen. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Number 8. I'm an ex-Apple engineer with more than 10 US patents to my name. Now, my goal over the next five minutes is to convince you that the technology we're building at Number 8 will do one of two things. Help increase audio advertising revenues. And secondly, is to help deliver context-based playlists. These two things. I've already introduced myself, so this is our team. My co-founder and CTO is Chris Watts. He's an ex-IBM engineer and also happens to have had a machine learning master's from Cambridge University. Given that our technology is focused on the music industry, uh, helping us navigate the space is Chris Carey. He's a leading industry analyst who was Global Insights Director at Universal and EMI Music. Okay, so by 2020, we'll have about 3 billion smartphones in circulation. That's on top of all the Alexas, the watches, the glasses, and a host of other IoT devices. Now, we know that the way we consume and interact with these devices changes based on what we are doing at a given point in time. Now, how, so how do we actually deliver these contextualized experiences? Well, this is where number eight technology comes in. Now, all the smartphones in your pockets today right now, they have a host of sensors in them. For example, accelerometers, gyroscope, barometer. These things can tell us a lot about what the user is currently doing at a given point in time. Now, the real trivial bit is actually to now just simply aggregate this information. The complex bit comes in, how do you combine these individual signals intelligently to then say and create a complete picture of what the user is currently doing, such as standing in a crowded bus while going from work to the gym. That's a specific context statement. Now going further now, how do you do this further on the device? That's even more challenging. And now why is on-device personalization important? Well, one is to minimize the data back and forth between the device and the cloud, thereby saving battery life, and also minimizing the dependency the software has on the cloud. So you can continue op operating even in offline scenarios. And that's where we think we have a, ver a very unique solution because it's a very challenging problem that we're trying to solve. Now, why music? Well, the thing is, music is one of those few medias that holds the key of understanding user context, because it happens throughout the day. We wake up in the morning, we commute to the work, we are working at the gym. It holds the key in understanding these different changes. Now, what is our value proposition in the music industry? It's twofold. First, for paid users, we help enable the delivery of context-based playlists thereby enriching the user experience. Our business model for that is licensing the software on a per device basis. For free users who are ad supported, we increase advertising re revenue significantly through behavioral targeting, through all those tag options you saw. And we basically want to make money by having a share of the advertising revenue increase on that. And this is very key because as music services look to expand the user base beyond the traditional market and beyond core users, into emerging markets and to the mass market appeal. This is where we see a really big opportunity for the music industry. Now, we are just coming off a very strong three weeks. Uh, we have just committed our seed round of funding, more than half a million pounds. And today we are here, very excited to be here. And you know, oftentimes for startups, a really great idea, but a really bad timing means the startup will die because that's the way startups work. The music space is very interesting because 2015 was a pivotal year. That's when 
the growth in streaming revenues overtook that of physical sales. And you can see that in 2015, that's when that inflection point happened. Now, that is largely in part due to the long work of, you know, really good work of the streaming services and also the worldwide growth and adoption of smartphones. So, and this market we see is going to increase and explode because it's a 3 billion user space that we're going after. And uh, we see we're very well placed for that. We're here today to meet with potential partners in music streaming companies, not just the, the larger ones, the Deezer, Pandora, Spotify, but also the ones in other geos such as Tencent, Angami, Salvin, and others. And thank you for listening. Yeah. Okay, who would like to go first? Eleanor, you're reaching for the microphone. <clears throat> So about your users, they are mainly streaming platforms? We can actually, so the way our software is built is a software development kit, so that means it can be included into music streaming, radio, podcasts, any of these areas. Okay, and yeah. how do you collect the data from the... So it's through a SDK, users. so the application will include it in their existing application. So not an app, it's a software technology that we license into your existing B2C platforms. Okay, and... Don't you have privacy challenges? No, actually, this is one of the solutions to privacy because the on-device personalization means the device is, the data stays on the device. So okay. this is actually one of the solutions okay. I would say. Okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, does, does your software um, learn patterns of behavior? So, you know, it will know once you do think something a few times and how will that feed into the playlist? Yeah. selection there's two parts to that so first is understanding what the user is doing now like what you are doing at a given point in time and then figuring that out over time so let's say you wake up at, at six o'clock i wake up at nine today the devices don't understand this difference it's called semantic time how how do you understand this difference and that's essentially what we're building how do you build this per profile of context over time and your selection criteria for the tracks um you know what what is that? Uh, just to be clear, we're not building the tracks. We're building the technology that will enable the delivery of context-based playlists. So we're right. not delivering tracks. We're not doing music oh. recommendation. No. But um, are, will people be able to edit their preferences on the type of music that is added to those Absolutely. playlists? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah. You're just providing the context exactly. part. Yeah, yeah. So you're sort of part right. of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You're building on top. Whether it's for advertising, whether it's for post notifications, whether it's for playlist curation, these are things that we can really help with because that's where context plays such a key role in that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah so two questions. One, could you tell us more about when you started, how long has the tech uh, been built, if you have uh, currently paying uh, clients, platforms? Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this was my master's thesis back in Delft uh, where I built a system to auto curate music players depending on context. My background's been in mobile. I've worked at Palm, Blackberry, and Apple. And my co-founder, as you saw, he was a very technical person as well, because this is a very technical startup. And in terms of, we've been going at it since a year and a half. And the second question was? Um, 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 are you, do you currently have paying clients? Or no, so we what is the plan yeah. for the next few months? We completed a technical challenge at Spotify, uh, where we were asked to analyze GPS data to predict user context. And we won that challenge. And now we're looking to actually engage. We are already engaging with partners, not just for streaming companies, but also for distribution partners for the tier two, tier three operators. And that's where we are. Because you know, this tech, it will, it's like building a B2B startup in hand once the partners come in, also the tech evolves. So that's the way we are building it in hand in hand. Yeah. And in a longer term, will you only focus in music or are you targeting other sectors? Yeah, we focus, we've had this question a lot. It's like, why only music? Uh, because Music we're focusing on because, is, like I said, the activity is very important to understand and build these patterns. It can be applied in a lot of spaces, like healthcare, finance. But we said music is the one that we really want to capture and dominate. Because it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Can I ask one more quick question about the input again? Yeah. Um, so it, obviously using sensors um, to figure out the context, can users also add context manually? Yeah. Uh, I was going to show a demo today, but... I was kind of wary that the demo might fuck up. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just show it after. It's a good admission. Yeah. No, it's uh, so essentially, uh, absolutely. For example, uh, 
heavily requested uh, feature was, can I add my calendar invites to this? Right. My calendar, because it makes sense. You know, if I'm in a meeting, don't disturb me. If I'm uh, on a bus, don't ping me or something, something of that sort. So yeah, definitely. Mm. So and for example, like uh, if I'm on, in my garden on a sunny Sunday afternoon, yeah. I could either be having an adult barbecue with friends or hosting a five-year-old's birthday party. Sure. So you can add that input. Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to yeah, just to clarify, you the user would be selecting and tweaking his feature through the streaming platforms app, and you you yeah. would be in an intermediary layer. So you're transparent in yeah, regards to the user. Absolutely. So the, from uh, the TNC's perspective, the user would essentially agree to the TNC's of the application provider. So whether it's streaming radio or the podcast providers, and then that'll be included in there. Cool. So and so, my, my last question for for time would be: uh, uh, Are any platforms already building things like that internally? Are you? Um, yeah, because so we had two groups of competitors. One is the large device manufacturers, that being Apple, Samsung, Huawei, and the others are smaller startups. The, uh, because on-device personalization is a very very challenging problem. And a larger platform, when they typically do, will you know Apple or Google, they'll build it for their platform. So we'll, have, we'll have to leave it there. Sorry, because we're, we're over time. So thank you very much. <laughs> to our second presenter uh, from number eight. Uh, so we have three more to go. Uh, we're now closer to home with our third presentation. So can I welcome to the stage Abdoulaye Samb uh, from Gigs in France. Thank you. Hello? You hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Abdullah Issam. I'm the CEO and the founder of Gigs. I'm very pleased to be here to present Gigs, which aims to be the best of experience digital into our day, everyday life. The two main issues I spotted in the live entertainment industry are one, that people in the general public are missing events that might have interest them. And two, that event producers are still struggling to sell all their tickets for the events. Gigs come to solve these issues by offering a personalized experience that creates commitment and promotes an active purchase. With two interconnected solutions, Gigs app and Gigs Pro. Our smart data processing combines numerous sources of events and track musical trends from streaming platform to retrieve analytical and predictive data for the entertainment industry. So now let's start with Gigs app to show you how it works. With Gigs app, you link all your musical sources and receive 20 events per week that match your musical profile. You get all your geolocalized musical outing in real time check the events, search by CDs, genres, by artists, and find out what's happening around you. Listen the lineup, check the forthcoming program for venues, manage your favorite artists as well, and uh, manage also your venues to find out what's coming up and buy tickets. And now let's present our main product, Geeks Pro. <coughs> Geeks Pro, it is the first intelligence platform that harnesses the power of musical profiling to create engagement. The more I know my audience, the more relevant my next programming will be data-driven programming made easy. It's built for streaming ticketing companies, festival, major event producer and label. So now let me show you how it works. You synchronize your event from uh, gigs up in order to uh, manage your operation campaign, email, advertising campaign. You target by location, define your budget flight dates, manage your enriched data from gigs. You can also custom your uh, operation and send targeted image, uh, targeting message to your audience. You can uh, also connect itself to your CRM or DMP in order to or to manage your operation campaign, and you can measure your operation, operation campaign. So, compared to the competition, 
we are the only one, I said the only one, offering event recommendation, trend predictive tracking, deep learning data, and digital marketing. So you can make sure with gigs to save time, share culture, measure the interaction of your audience, learn from it with the data mining algorithm, and make money. So how is our business model? We get paid from affiliation with GigsApp. And with Gigs Pro, you we have a license that costs 3,000 euros per year. And for the festivals, it's from 2,000 euros. And streaming companies, we provide API custom for them for two euros, 1,000 requests uh, without forgetting the additional features. So our focus today is to raise 500,000 euros to accelerate our growth. We focus on the product, product, but we start selling. We sell, we have more than 10 customers. We manage more than 300,000 profile and reach and have 15 users without any effort of communication. So gigs, it is a mix of patient and experienced people. So we have a very strong associate data science partners, Symbols, and we signed a couple of days ago two main big contracts with MAMA Festival, uh, with the Dream Nation Festival. We are in discussion with Electro Beach, uh, Insane, and we start selling, we start monetizing. And the next steps is to just have to download gigs and find out what, what's, going, what's going on in Cannes and Monaco if you want to stay uh, during the weekend. Thank you, guys. Okay, Kate. Uh, hi, congratulations. Hi. Um, scaling at speed, right? Okay, I get, I get the business model for the pro. How are you going to get enough people to download your app quickly enough to make that a value proposition? Okay, that's a good question. So Geeks Pro is the channels who are going to make quickly our growth with the acquisition people. So we develop uh, um, trading partners with the uh, Digitik, Fnac. So we use their data, we group those these data, we, and we're going to have a kind of, that's, tr that's simple, Gigs Pro going to aliment Gigs app. So the channels to do the profiling users going to help us to bring people in our apps, definitely. So we, we do a test and it's working very, very good. So we have a very strong acquisition uh, strategy on that point. What would be your aim for sort of in terms of user numbers in, let's say, five years from now? What, do you have like a goal, a target? Do you have like a roadmap to get there? Yeah, Drew, for the six coming weeks, coming months, we uh, target 200,000 users. That's the target for the moment. But we, we can... We can make we can do it because we have with three con three contracts we have three hundred thousand data profile and reach nowadays today. So the next steps is to have a million for the two coming months and for the six coming months we will make sure that we're gonna have two hundred and two hundred thousand people in our web and application mobile. Are you using any kind of like, you know, viral marketing, like recommending, you know, recommend your friend to get some kind of bonus or are you planning on anything like that to get users to do your marketing for you? Yeah, today we have 15,000 people using our application, mobile and web, without any effort communication. It is only our, our people around who talk about gigs. So we, we have a strategy. So we build the product, we measure the interaction, and we learn from it. So now the next steps is to deploy the strategy of our communication with Geeks Pro. So it's really simple. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, how will you use the 500,000 euros if you have them? 5,000 euros. Uh, we're going to hire data science people. We're going to hire business development to accelerate our growth. We have to finalize the beta test uh, application Gigs Pro that we plan to launch in September. So Gigs is just the 
the, the platform who are going to change the life of all the event producers. So we just need to go fast and propose uh, campaign advertising with uh, in RTB, uh, propose email, push notification email, message, all this. And you send it, we just have to approval for you and make sure that all your data are GDPR compliant. So just, just that's just uh, the, the, the point. So you want to focus your commercial strengths on the B2B side? Rather yeah, than the B2C. definitely. So the B2B side, this is our main, 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 main product. But the B2B side gonna work with the <coughs> B2C size because it's connected. Okay, and so right now the B2C is only organic? The it is organic. Okay. Yeah, definitely. David, uh, yeah, you can you just refresh our memory? You mentioned three deals that allowed you to acquire user and engagement. Could you talk about those? Are they um, ticketing platforms, or I'm not sure I understood that part. The the question I don't understand. Is tell me more. Uh, you you mentioned you had three three deals. Yeah. So can you? I'm, I'm not sure I understood. Were they ticketing platforms or? No, they are festivals. Okay. So. What they did, so they provide uh, the data, so precious data in out for the uh, last uh, edition. So what we're going to do, so we take this data, we enrich the data, so we create a kind of uh, uh, tunnels with gigs. We enrich this data to analyze with uh, um, many algorithm clustering, segmentation, collaborative. And after that, we just target for each people, so we can change, uh, for example, uh, we can add the smart pixels to uh, a smart pixel to their uh, website in order to have a feedback. For example, history, uh, browsing histories, uh, tunnel conversion, and all this stuff. So we enrich and in order to target the right people to the right event at the right time. So okay, that's sorry, we're gonna have to we we'll wrap up there. We're ten seconds over. So thank you very much. So, just to refresh your memory, we've heard from Muso AI, we've heard from Number 8, we've heard from Gigs. We have two more uh, presentations, and our next presentation uh, is uh, all the way from San Francisco, uh, Sony Thiakanath from SA. Hello. Hello? Cool. Hi. We're SI. We are the A&R and analytics platform for music. So about us, we're an all-star team from spin up from San Francisco, Silicon Valley. We hail from Apple, Uber, Salesforce, and Facebook. And we have years of experience building high fidelity products at these places. And we're advised by a top venture firms in Silicon Valley. So a couple of our advisors include Berkeley Eeks Department, uh, The House, Ycomb, WSGR, and general catalyst. So what is our vision? Our vision is to capture, contextualize, and connect all music data on the internet. Why? Well, we think there's just too much data and too little context. One, companies need a better recommendation engine to recommend music-related content. Two, a &Rs need a structured approach to search for talent. Three, digital marketers need to contextualize success to plan strategies. Four, artists, managers need to aggregate content and understand the impact across platforms and not get too lost. And because of this, we made a system called the Asai Brain, which powers our two main products, the Asai Terminal and the Asai Recommend. So what is the Asai Brain? Well, you can think of the Asai Brain as the Google page rank of the music industry. It essentially is a recommendation engine slash uh, indexing engine powered by our machine learning technology, and it powers both of our products. Uh, we like to think that the Asai Brain is the new recommendation engine of the music industry. So think of it as Next Big Sound 2.0 or even Echo Nest 2.0. So how does the brain work? Well, we're taking a different approach to analyzing data. Uh, a lot of our competitors, a lot of, uh, a lot of other companies out there, they analyze static content, meaning play counts, uh, stream skips, uh, in order to come up with results. We focus on rich data, uh, meaning photos, comments, sentiment, uh, things that are, that are hard to contextualize. 
And even though it's a harder problem and a problem that takes longer to solve, uh, it gives us better signals. And as a result, uh, we delivered this as a recommendation engine, both in our terminal and our recommendation API. So our two products are the Asai terminal, uh, which you can think of it as the automated a &R web platform. Um, and it's aimed towards record labels, uh, managers, and promoters. And Asai Recommend, which is our recommendation API, and aimed towards the Fortune 500, tech companies, and radio stations, for example. So the Asai Terminal is our automated a &R platform, and it aggregates multiple sources to deliver recommendations just based on the Asai brain. It uh, eliminates fraud, um, and it's able to find up-and-coming artists, uh, usually 10 weeks or even better, before they even hit charts. And it's aimed towards record labels. So a bit of a screenshots of our platform. Uh, selects are artists that you want to sign immediately. Charts are the top ranking songs currently at the moment in the industry. And Pro is for the data-focused a and who wants to see what's going on in the industry. Now, our more exciting product, uh, Asai Recommend, is our most powerful product. And it's a recommendation engine API, which leverages the Asai brain to deliver better recommendations based on data you input into the API. So a couple examples include radio stations. So for example, they would use this API to automatically create playlists based on up and coming uh, artists in the San Francisco area. So we're working with a couple of radio stations in the SF Bay Area uh, to automatically create playlists that are played in the late night. Uh, a second example is social networks. So for example, with Twitter, we're exploring the idea of feeding in all Twitter data to automatically create the Twitter moments cards. So you guys know about the Twitter moments cards uh, when you go on the app or on the website, how it delivers news content, uh, politics, sports, and so on. One thing that's missing currently right now is music. So they're focusing on how to use our API to deliver those recommendations. Um, and lastly, DSPs. So uh, arguably, DSPs right now uh, are focusing on recommendations, and that's a current problem uh, in the industry. Uh, so. DSPs such as Deezer, Apple, and SoundCloud can use our API to automatically recommend songs and playlists to users based on their listening habits. Our business model. So our business models consisted of B2B uh, SaaS yearly contracts. Um, the SI recommend is B2B enterprise contracts ranging from 100K to 1 mil per year. Um, and it's aimed towards the Fortune 500 and makes up the majority of our revenue. A side terminal is aimed towards record labels and it's 2K per month per seat on a yearly basis as well. And our revenue split is between 73 and 27%, approximately. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. OK, who'd like to go first? Kate. Hi, thanks. Uh, well done. Congratulations. Um, how long have you been testing the brain? The brain. So we founded the company, it's been two years. Uh, we have 60 customers, um, and the brain works pretty well. I mean, we've signed acts. Uh, recommendations work well. So, you, I mean, your, your blurb um, says um, quite succinctly, machine learning software to identify what the next big hits will be in the music industry. Yes. What has been your hit and miss rate on that? Uh, hit and miss rate. So uh, right now we're at approximately 70% for uh, hits. Uh, misses are about 30%. Uh, which is arguably good when you sign an artist. Um, and we also test against the, like, the major artists that are currently in the industry. So Bazi, for example, uh, he, if I remember correctly, broke in January, February. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and we found him in November to October when he was posting on Instagram. So a lot of the things we actually focus on is Instagram and the artists that don't even have, a, uh, don't even have some sort of footprint on DSPs at all. Because uh, a lot of the artists that we focus on are uh, low time, uh, it's like kind of garage esque people posting on YouTube, Instagram, or even Twitter. Um, and we look at that as a stronger uh, sentiment in terms of finding out if, they're, if they will become a hit or not. Uh, so, long winded question 70 and 30. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Who are your main competitors? So, back in the day, our main competitors were sound charts, uh, chart metric. Uh, Next Big Sound, arguably. Uh, now, since we're focusing, so we changed our business model to focus more on the Asai Recommend uh, API, and that seems to be a stronger revenue model for us, too. Um, so 
we don't have competitors in that field. Our ex competitor used to be Echo Nest, which is bought up by Spotify, which is why we're getting a lot more traction in terms of that, that area. How many clients do you have with the SI Recommend? SI Recommend, so we're working at five people right now. And it's an annual contract? Yes, each and every call track. Yes. And among the five, do you have uh, uh, all of them uh, uh, renew their contracts? Uh, the, we're in the first year right now, okay. and one of them is not in the music field. Yeah, so they're they're pretty diverse. Um, yeah, you um, you mentioned a lot of Instagram data. Uh, yes. So I'm guessing you're pulling a lot from the public APIs as well. Yes. Um, how are you handling changes in relationship with those platforms? Yes, uh, that's a big uh, thing that after the Facebook Cambridge Analytica fiasco, uh, Facebook has been shutting out a lot of things. Luckily, we have uh, Twitter, which is a stronger indication also for uh, for fans, for data that we are pulling in. So we're focusing on the platforms that are currently open right now. We're trying to get Instagram to be a little bit more open now with their APIs. Uh, but it, I mean, it's been it's been working fine for so far. Yeah. Well, you have more time. Um, yeah. I was just curious when you said seventy thirty. What do you consider a hit or a miss? Hit. Um, it's considered someone that you can sign and make a profit out of in some way, or. So that's one. Uh, second one is whether they jump onto a major playlist in some way. So, so are you talking about your internal testing there rather than clients? That's you. These are clients too. Well, all those clients. These right? are clients okay. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, intermediate testing. Yeah, intermediate testing is also seventy thirty too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It could be argued by somebody who were being pedantic mm -hmm. um, that the act of being your sort of like selected hit artist and being approached by a record label yeah. and getting signed is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. What yes. would be your answer to that? Uh, we, we try to use this platform as, you can think of this platform as how PayPal was back in 2000. Uh, PayPal had the issue of uh, needing to find fraud within the system and trying to eliminate fraud, right? Uh, they try to automate that entire process and it didn't work out in the end. Uh, so we try to, we try to do that. We try to make that process of trying to automate A and R completely. But we found that that's not a that's not a helpful thing. What to do? Uh, the whole idea behind this platform is to be able to just understand the mass amount of data that's coming into Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So you can understand what's going on in the field. Because still, you need to search on what's going on in this in certain platform to see if you want to get a hit or not. So, would your measure of a of a miss be that they are signed and no money is made from them? Um, or even break even. I think break even okay. is considered a miss. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, we've only got six seconds left, so I think we'll have to leave it there. So thank you very much, Sonny. <laughs>
And we do this by giving artists links to use on their socials or tools to install directly on their website that are powered by Seated. And before tickets go on sale, Seated drives fans to set a reminder and they're automatically sent a text message right before tickets go on sale. And the fans can go one step further. They can submit their ticket preferences and their credit card information in advance and Seated will automatically buy the tickets for them. And then after the show sells out, Seated drives fans to a wait list or an official resale exchange. And so where the existing ticketing companies are only focused on servicing fans when tickets are available to buy, Seated fills the gaps and puts artists in control at every single step of the event lifecycle. So in less than a year, We've already sold over $2 million worth of tickets through Seated, half of which has come in the last quarter alone, and half of all registered users have added their phone number and credit card and expressed their intent to purchase tickets. And we're doing this all in a private beta with less than 20 artists. So we know we're just getting started because the amount of ticket inventory that remains unsold is estimated at $12 billion globally, and the ticket resale marketplace is just as big of an opportunity for us to capture for artists. And it scales really quickly because we're doing this entirely within automated and self-serve tools for artists and their teams. And all of the buyer data that's collected is directly integrated into MailChimp and their existing marketing tools. So today, we're already working with some amazing artists. And their teams love using our tools because it provides their fans with a better experience and it helps them capture more buyer data and generate more revenue with every single click. And today, we take a transaction fee, but in the future, we know we can unlock a ton of other revenue streams and verticals when the time is right. And it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, because we're doing this already with artists today, including Leon Bridges, who launched his entire international tour using Seated. And one of the pilots that we're most excited about is what we did with Jason Mraz, where we sent a proactive text message to fans and we proved we could sell additional tickets just by them replying yes. Seated is a team of experienced software engineers and some of the original team members from Applause. Artists are the best marketers in the world. So when we empower them to take control of their ticketing experience, everyone in the industry benefits. Seated works because fans trust artists and artists trust Seated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who would uh, like to, why break a habit? Kate, go on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, thank you, well done. Um, empowering artists to keep control of the data is, is great, you know, really uh, noble, but data comes with real responsibility now, especially after GDPR. So what are your sort of intentions in terms of helping artists who may not be as aware of, of the issues about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we learned that very quickly. And uh, when we first started partnering with uh, the major record labels, so in the case of Death Cab for Cutie and with Christina Aguilera, we had to work closely with Warner and with Sony and their legal teams to make sure that our privacy policy and our terms and conditions um, were, were compliant. And so that was a strenuous task, but um, we've gotten the assurance of their legal teams that, that we're doing the right thing. And when do you launch? I mean, I know you've sort of beta, you've on beta at the moment. When's your sort of live launch? Yeah, so we're working directly with a select group of artists, um, specifically because we want, we need to make sure that our tools can scale really quickly before we open the floodgates and allow everyone to um, to sign up. So uh, in in ten weeks, we're launching a fully self serve, open to the public product, and we're yeah, we're excited to get more artists on board. And what is your hope target for scale? As far as quantifiable Scaling, numbers, yeah. what, 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 what I mean, are you every for? artist in the world should be using Seated to announce their tour, uh, to, to announce their tours and capture data on their fans and generate more revenue. Um, there's tens of thousands of artists that are um, quality artists that are represented by major talent agencies that we're targeting, um, and that's that's our goal. Thank you. 
uh, how long can it take to to sell the the solution to uh, like superstars uh, artists? Sure. So selling it to a major artist um, when the alternatives are having zero control and having no tools to capture data has actually been very easy for us. Um, every artist should announce their tour and capture data, capture the reminders, increase conversions. Um, so. The, the the difficulty in the sales process is that we don't have a sales team. It's artists that we're going uh, to one by one. But in the example of Leon Bridges, um, Leon Bridges is on Columbia. Columbia also works with Harry Styles. Harry Styles also works with Christina Aguilera's team. So there's this network effect of individuals and teams um, that really allow us to scale quickly. And who is your best touch point? The artist himself, uh, his agent, the event. Yes. Um, so we rarely work with artists directly. When we're when I say artists, I mean artists and their teams and the professionals that are in this room. Um, and so the best uh, evangelists for us are the people that are actually using the existing tools. Um, and uh, the best <clears throat> sales point and sales leads for us are anybody that represents a large number of artists. So we started with talent agencies who introduce us to managers who often um, work directly with artists. And how do you integrate with the, um, the venues? Yeah, so through the actual ticket transaction portion of it, um, we have direct relationships with promoters, and that leverage comes from the artists. So artists have incredible leverage going to promoters um, to be able to gather allocations of tickets, and that's how we do the transaction element. From the reminders and waitlist side of stuff, um, there are APIs for the ticketing companies that we're able to pull in to detect the status of the event, um, and that's how we kind of interface with the existing ticketing companies. David? Yeah. Um, yeah, how long did it take you to come to this point? When did you start this company? Um, so we found, we incorporated the company in February of last year. We launched um, we launched with our first test event May first, um, and to this point, it's been about thirteen months. And um, looking ahead, what would be the one or two single focus for the next six eight months for you? Yeah, so my personal focus right now is fundraising. Um, aside from that, uh, hiring, we're hiring in New York um, to build our team there and really help us scale. Um, but the, the, from a product standpoint, our focus is making things more automated and more self-serve for the artists and their teams because nobody wants to create a, a product that creates more work for the artists. And so everything we can do to make their lives easier and make their team's lives easier um, is what we're focused on so we can really scale. To, to take on more artists. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just ask very quickly because there are quite high profile artists there in the beta. I mean, do anyone on the team have previous contacts and experience within music business? Yeah, so my, my experience was working directly with artists uh, and teams at Atlantic Records. That's where I started my career. And for the past five years after that, uh, my sole job within um, applause was winning over 300 clients to do direct ticketing deals and the the Azoff team acquired our company and so that opened a lot of doors and built a lot of trust there as well. Cool. Okay. Our last company applause, yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much. So that's our last of the presentations in this category and again just to remind you we heard from Muso AI uh, from USA, Number 8 from UK, Gigs from France, Assay from USA, and Seated from USA. Um, and now uh, the judges, uh, together with uh, representatives from Deezer, are going to go off and uh, uh, deliberate, choose a winner. Um, do come back later on for the announcement of the winners, of course, where you'll hear who all of the winners across the various categories are. That's 5.30 uh, taking place in here. But don't go away, do come back in five minutes. Uh, we will have the next uh, set of presentations in the experiential uh, technologies category. Uh, so it just remains for me to, uh, to thank, thank our sponsor, Deezer, and to thank all of the presenters who I think did a very good job. Please, big round of applause with the judges as well. Thank you, everybody.